Consort Cixi is one of the most famous beauties of ancient China. She was sent by her king to seduce an enemy monarch, King Fuchai of Wu. She succeeded in her mission, and her legendary beauty brought down a short-lived kingdom. While she was known to be a femme fatale, some historians view her in a more sympathetic light. Cixi has become an unsung patriotic heroine who sacrificed her own happiness for the kingdom's interests. Let's unfold the tragic story of Cixi, one of the renowned four beauties of ancient China. Cixi also known as Shi Guang, was born around 500 BC in Zhuji, the capital of the ancient state of Yu. She was born into a fairly poor family, her father sold firewood for a living, and her mother was a weaver, and Cixi is said to have been a silk washer. She was always known for her beauty ever since she was a little girl. According to descriptions in Chinese literature, Cixi's beauty was not only natural, but also perfect. But just as an old Chinese saying goes, beauties are often ill-fated, the perfect natural beauty didn't bring Cixi a happy peaceful life. Cixi lived during the late spring and autumn period, an era which lasted from 446 to 771 BC. During this period, China was not a single country but it was made up of several states, like many kingdoms, and those states were constantly fighting each other. Cixi was from the state of Yu which was defeated by the state of Wu. After the kingdom of Yu was wiped out, the king of Yu, Go Jian, and his wife were forced to work as slaves for three years in Wu until Fu Chai the king of Wu kingdom released them, and let them reign as client monarchs in his realm. Go Jian, upon returning to his native land, swore that he would never forget the shame and humiliation he had suffered in the past three years. As he feared that he might be accustomed to a life of luxury and forget his mission, he discarded his comfortable mats and slept on a bed of firewood instead. He hung a small slice of bitter bile above him, and tasted it now and then to remind himself of the, the humiliation he and his country had suffered. In the meantime, Go Jian was taking steps to rebuild his country and army. He also recruited a team of top advisors to help him map out a plan for bringing down the Wu Kingdom. One of Go Jian's trusted advisors, Fan Li, suggested an effective revenge plan. Fan Li learned of the King of Wu's weakness for beautiful women and suggested for the king to send a beautiful woman to seduce King Fu Chai. King Go Jian loved the idea and agreed with it. He made Fan Li disguise himself as a merchant and search for the most beautiful woman in the kingdom. After an extensive search, Fan Li found Cixi to be the most beautiful. Once Fan Li discovered her, she was brought to King Go Jian's court, where her stunning appearance marked the beginning of their strategic vengeance plan. Cixi was then persuaded to agree to help her home state to revenge for its humiliation. She willingly agreed to be part of the plan. Cixi had already enough natural beauty to charm anyone, but she lacked dancing skills and culture. The journey to transform Cixi, a simple village girl, into a refined and cultured lady capable of executing their plan, was not an overnight process. It required an extensive period of nearly three years devoted to her training and refinement. During this time, Cixi underwent meticulous grooming and instruction to cultivate her skills and knowledge. She immersed herself in various arts, excelling in painting, calligraphy, and chess. She was also drilled about her mission to the enemy kingdom. See she did not disappoint and she emerged, well prepared to shoulder her mission. During her training, Si Shi and Fan Li had fallen in love, but they had to cast their romance aside for the better interests of the kingdom. When she was deemed ready, King Go Jian sent her as a tributary gift to King Fu Chai and waited for his destruction. As soon as the King of Wu set eyes on Si Shi, he was immediately captivated by the ethereal beauty and elegance of the Yu woman. Gradually, the Wu King began to neglect his duties and spent most of his time with Si Shi, dining and whining, and often taking Si Shi out for carriage rides. He did everything to please her. Under her guidance, he dismissed and ordered the suicide of his capable minister, Wu Zixiu. He replaced him with an ineffective minister. 
King Fuchai even constructed the Guanhua Palace for her. It was said to be so lavish that pearl strands hung to shade the windows. King Fuchai also constructed the promenade of musical shoes next to Guanhua Palace. It had marble floors, and underneath the floors, there were thousands of earthenware jars that sounded like chimes every time she walked or danced on it. King Fuchai even had a special river made for her and erected pavilions along its banks for dancers and musicians to perform. Cixi, however, never lost sight of her mission. She tried her best to keep the Wu King away from his court duties and frequently sent intelligence to her home state. Cixi stayed in the palace for about nine years as his concubine. During those nine years, he was so negligent of his duties that the strong kingdom of Wu had weakened. In the year of 482 BC, King Fuchai embarked on a journey to northern Yangzhi to attend a significant conference. This gathering brought together rulers from different states. Those rulers convened with the purpose of deliberating strategies to seize control over central China, which was still under the dominion of the crippling Zhou dynasty. It was during this conference that King Go Jian decided to act upon his revenge. He launched a surprise attack against the kingdom of Wu, which left many casualties on the Wu side. Since the kingdom of Wu was already weakened by King Fu Chai's negligence, King Go Jian had no difficulties attacking Wu again and won. This time around, Wu was now part of Yu territory, where it remained until 150 BC. In a final act of revenge, King Go Jian imposed exile upon King Fu Chai, banishing him to a tiny island off the shores of China. Overwhelmed by humiliation, King Fuchai chose to end his own life. This tragic demise marked the end of Wu's existence as an independent state, forever altering the course of history. There are two conflicting historical accounts that tell what happened to Consort Si Shi, after she accomplished her mission in helping her home state bring down the state of Wu. In one disputed account, Si Shi returned to her native land, but the wife of Go Jian feared that she might use her charms and seduce the king and bring upon the downfall of her own country. Therefore, the wife of the king ordered people to sink her into the lake. Another account gives Cixi a more happy ending. In this account, she and Fan Li reunited as lovers after she accomplished her mission. They lived near Lake Tai where Fan Li became a merchant. Whatever her fate was, Cixi continues to bedazzle future generations by her legendary charms, her unusual identity, and her mysterious disappearance after her work was done.